Welcome to The Music Reel. I'm your host, Nicola Burton, and today my very special guest is Patrick Nolan, who is the Artistic Director and the CEO for Opera Queensland. Patrick, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you going? I'm good, thanks, Nikki. Thank you. I usually start with everyone with saying, what was your lockdown story? Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Um, Yeah, let's start. Let's start with the big one. Who saw it coming? Um, Yeah. Uh, so, as, as it happens, I, so I, my family lives in Sydney and I had gone back to visit them. Uh, so, I sort of, I, I spend, usually spend about, you know, one week a month in Sydney with my family and uh, I went down on the 20th of March and I think Queensland closed its borders on the 23rd of March or something oh. like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I was fortunately I was with my family in the lockdown, but um, which was which was interesting. So I was operating oh. Opera Queensland out of my my bedroom for <laughs> a couple of months. Yeah. Everyone has adapted to do the best that they can do. I mean, that's the thing with us, Patrick. We are art- artist industries, but we're creative and we're innovative. When something happens, we just find a way to pivot and go another way. Yeah. And for you guys, tw- this, your season 2020 looks very different now to what you actually had planned this time last year. But now as a result, you've, you've created this wonderful thing called an aria a day. And I stumbled across it. I was scrolling through YouTube and I came across Miliana Nikolic singing Song of the Gypsy Girl. Yeah, and I gorgeous. started to cry. Yeah. It was the most yeah. incredible. I got goosebumps even thinking about it. She told her story how she and her son were stuck in Rome and her husband was in Australia, and I thought, like, isn't this just how it is? No matter what happens to artists around the world, they're so resilient and they're so willing to keep the music going for the rest of humanity. And that's why I wanted to talk to you today, I guess, to hear about an aria a day, how that came about, and I guess all of the challenges that you've experienced trying to put that together. So could you tell us a little bit about an aria a day? Yeah, so, I mean, you're absolutely right. It was, you know, we, our 2020 season was obviously all about the productions we were presenting in in theatres yeah. in, in venues and and you know mo- we we were due to start rehearsing our big regional show which we we were taking Tosca which was a, a production we presented at QPAC last year to seven regional centres um, this ah. year um, and, so, and that was actually due to start rehearsals next week um, in, in a different world. Uh, and and the week before we all you know everything we put we were due to sorry um, we were due to do our first show of the season in, in at QPAC which was Lorelei which is this new Australian opera um, and so when we when we cancelled Lorelei it, it had three really wonderful singers um, in and Ali McGregor Dimity Shepherd and uh, Antoinette Halloran and um, uh, we said to them, "Would you mind just singing us a song? You know, when we, we're going to announce to to the audience that you know, unfortunately, we've had to cancel, and um, we would really love to share at least one of the songs from the yeah. show with, with our audiences when we do this." And so, so they did. They sang this really, really beautiful song, and um, we had such a positive response to that. We thought, well. You know, it's still you know it's still possible to connect with audiences. You know, and song has such a such an extraordinary capacity to to touch us. You know, in in ways that you, you, we're not necessarily that you know uh, in control of. You know, I think but you know I think the emotional response that we have to music is such a powerful thing, um, particularly when we find ourselves in, in in the sort of pressure situation that that COVID nineteen has created. Uh, and so out of that, we thought, well, you know, maybe there's an opportunity for us to actually, you know, still keep, keep the song alive um, in a really simple way. And, and that was kind of always the premise was that, um, it, you know, the production values were not going to be high. You know, we, we really just wanted to be able, we wanted singers to be able to share what they're doing, you know, what they love doing most of all, and that is, that is singing a song um, from wherever they were. And if that just meant, you know, putting their phone on, on the side and singing, then, then, then so be it. And, and so we reached out and uh, to, to, you know, sort of a core group of all, our first port of call was all the singers who'd sung with us in the last couple of seasons. We sent emails to them and said, you know, would, would you be interested in participating? And, 
you know, we were knocked out, you know, sort of, uh, you know, any, anyone who said they couldn't, it was because, you know, they, they didn't, they, they were having issues with technology or whatever. No one actually said, no, thank you. Um, oh. and, it's, and, it's, and it's gone from there, you know, people now contact us saying, can we please be involved, which is really lovely. Yeah. It's wonderful because your purpose is to bring opera to, I guess, to a more diverse range of audiences. And in many ways, doing the ARIA a day on, online has actually helped you to connect with people that maybe you haven't connected with before. Do you think that there's now an opportunity for the way that you present your work now as a result of lockdown? Absolutely. Um, I, I, that's really interesting in terms of, I mean, because, you know, we're, we're constantly... Um, looking to you know expand our audience base. I mean, every 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 company does that. I think whether you're an arts company or, or you you know you're selling tubs of yogurt, whatever it might be, um, you you want more people to engage with what you're doing. And yeah. uh, so uh, you know the the thing that you you don't realise is when you put this stuff online, is all of a sudden your audience becomes international. Yeah. Um, that's and that's the really been one of the really lovely things is the the feedback we've been getting from people in we we had a comment from someone in Norway the other day, um, Sweden, UK, America. You know, like this, we, we're getting so many different people um, from all over the the world tell us how much they're enjoying uh, an aria a day. So, uh, and I, and I think you know, talking to other arts organisations, I think this this has taught us how uh, you know this whole you know one of the one of the pluses of this this thing we're living through is that the digital realm actually does enable us to connect with audiences in ways that perhaps because you know because the performing arts is so much about that relationship between the performer and the audience um, I don't think we it, it has been our first port of call yes we've used it as a promotional tool obviously you know via YouTube etc to share what might be coming up in the theatre but I don't think it, we've, we've actually actively thought well actually no this can be a, a performance venue of its of itself and and I'm, I'm you know that is certainly something that we will be doing in the future is you know we will have a digital stream you know and we will have a digital uh, program that was oh, it's so important, isn't it? Because we live yeah. online now, don't we, Patrick? So when I when I do my cooking, I normally put Puccini on Spotify. Now I put an Aria Day on my YouTube and I'm listening to you guys because I'd rather listen to Australian content and support a Queensland business than somebody else. So it's like that one tiny little change in what I do. Imagine there's millions of us around the world now connecting with you that yeah. hadn't before. Yeah. So I hope that you keep this going. It's it's um it's wonderful. That, that's fantastic. I love I love the uh, the image of you cooking to an aria. That's, that's, <laughs> well, what better what, way to cook, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, exactly. You're cooking pasta. What are you, what are you cooking? Anything, <laughs> <laughs> anything. But I think uh, my my big question for you is: Look, it takes a village to put on a show. We all know that. Any of us in the arts, we know what it takes behind the scenes. And how, so how did lockdown impact all of the men and women who are involved in your productions, the people we don't see on stage? How yeah. did it impact them? That, that's a great question. And, it, well, it's, it's impacted them in, in, in a really um, difficult and challenging way. Because, uh, as you say, you know, to, to put on a production, it's not, it's not just the, the singers on the stage and, and the orchestra in the pit. Um, you know, there's a... There's a big stage crew behind it, you know, and there's also the, the chorus as well. Um, yeah. And, you know, then there's all the marketing team and then there's all the front of house staff, you know, who are, who are operating the bars and taking your tickets. So to that extent, you know, the virus has, has been, um, you know, had a, had a really severe impact on a lot of people's livelihoods. And, uh, yeah. and, and, and that was also one of the other things that was really um, important to us with an aria a day was that we wanted to create opportunities for singers to to be paid for the work that they do. I mean, and it's you know obviously it's not it's not a huge gig to sing a song you know uh, a one off song, but it's something um, and it's an opportunity for them to perform. But around that is 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 all the uh, you know as you say the staff and the and the, the crew that would usually support a show and. Um, because you know, not all of them have been able to get JobKeeper, or, or and, and but hopefully some of them have been able to get JobSeeker. Um, 
But, you know, it, it's a worry. Uh, so each time we cancel a show, we try and factor in some kind of um, payout to, to everyone who would have been involved in the show as some sort of compensation, um, as much as we have the capacity to do that. Uh, but we're also, you know, constantly looking for other opportunities in which we may be able to engage those people or, or provide them, yeah, with some form of employment. It's, it, it is... It's a really tricky, really, really difficult time for a lot of people in that regard. And, uh, you know, that sort of the, the figures that we uh, are seeing coming through now and as, as sort of things start to settle in terms of what, the impact that the virus is having on the economy, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not looking like it's going to get any easier in, in the, the next 18 months at least. So yeah. it's, it's a challenge that is, will be, you know, front and centre of our thinking for a long time to come, I'm sure. And, look, you are a key arts, arts organisation in Australia. Your voice is vital. So what changes do you believe that we, as a collective of arts organisations, across any time or any type of arts genre, what do you think we need to... What changes we need to make in order to meet the future now that we've got this changed environment, this changed ecosystem? As you said, it's going to take 18 months to 24 months to recover... I think we need to make some changes. What do you think we need to do that's different? That's, that's, <laughs> I know, big question, right? <laughs> it is, it is, it is uh, but it's, it's a really important question and I think yeah. it's something that I, I, you know, I'm not going to um, be able to offer you a, a succinct answer here and now, but I think that what this time offers us is an opportunity to actually really... You know, we do have a bit of space. We don't have the pressure of putting on a production. I mean, we have, we have all, there are many other pressures, you know, impacting us at this moment. But I think what you're addressing there is the fact that, um, you know, the art sector, um, and I think this, quite, this, this applies to all sectors, but we're talking about the arts, is, um, is a sector that, you know, is, is really vital to the health of a, of a society and a community, and that's, that's, I think that's become really apparent in the way in which um, artists have become so important in terms of getting people through the lockdown period. Um, but how we support that art sector and the way in which we um, make sure that they are that the art sector is considered a valuable part of the greater economy, I think that's that's what we have to start to think about as a sector ourselves, but also as a community at large. And okay. and I think what we need to do is actually look at the model that was and ask questions about whether or not it was functioning in as as, as, as good a possible way. And you know, and that and that that sort of is that that's comprehensive. It's, it, it it applies to our federal and state public funding systems, so the Australia Council, all the various state arts um, funding organisations. Uh, and, I, and, I, I, and I will say that Arts Queensland has been exceptional in the way they've responded to the arts community and the support they've offered and the leadership. Um, you know, starting with Leanne Enoch as, as the Minister for the Arts in, in Queensland, but that it really um, goes all the way through uh, Arts Queensland as a... As a organisation, uh, their, 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 their proactive response to the virus and the way in which they've engaged with us and kept us part of the conversation has been, uh, you know, really exceptional leadership. Um, and I think that type of conversation and, and, and that's creating a space in which we can look at, okay, well, what, 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 is, what is the, you know, what are we as a, as a sector and what are we bringing and how can we work together to make sure that we are building strength and that, we're, and that, that in, the, in the context of a, both a crisis situation but also a situation in which we're recovering out of that crisis? How are we setting up structures and how are we setting up uh, uh, an ecosystem, if you like, that is going to allow us to be stronger and to grow and, and, and not and not be destroyed by this or, or, or splintered in such a way that you know there is no focus and there and there is no potential for growth because I think there is enormous potential for growth out of out of this this crisis. I agree, and you've actually posed some really great questions that we will be taking our time to answer as we all go through recovery. So, Patrick, it was a great, a great opportunity for us today to hear your voice and have your voice add to this conversation. We wish Opera Queensland the very best in its recovery. I will make sure we continue to advertise what you're doing because 
Queensland without QPAC and QSO and Queensland Valley and Opera Queensland, it's just not Queensland. So we can't wait till we can get back to business, get that whole South Bank Cultural Centre back to business. And look, Patrick, it's been great to speak to you and we will revisit these questions. But in the meantime, I wish you the very best in your recovery and I can't wait to talk to you on the other side of this. Patrick thank Nolan, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much.